Welcome to Linda's Corner. My name is Linda Bjork. For today's episode, I will be sharing an excerpt from one of my books called You Got This, An Action Plan to Calm Fear, Anxiety, Worry, and Stress. With all the disturbing current events we're facing, people all around the world are experiencing overwhelmingly high levels of stress right now. I feel strongly about the need to help empower people to be resilient and able to handle their problems. You Got This is a thoroughly researched, easy-to-read, well-designed action plan to calm feelings of fear, anxiety, worry, and stress with a wide variety of proven cognitive behavioral therapy techniques that empower people to regain a sense of peace and control in their lives. You Got This will show you how to decrease stressors, increase coping skills, increase confidence, increase resilience, and find solutions to your problems. The book is available in paperback and ebook formats on Amazon. Today's excerpt highlights one of the many tools shared in the book. These tools are part of the section of the book called Daily Action Steps. If we want to make positive changes in our lives, then learning new information simply isn't enough. Change requires action. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but there is no other way. However, it doesn't have to be hard, overwhelming, or take a lot of time. Rather than expecting someone to completely overhaul their lives overnight, these action steps are broken down into small, bite-sized pieces that are simple and short so that they can be completed by real people who are living real lives. It's going to be okay. You got this. Today, we're going to look at how the concept of forgiveness might be able to reduce our mental and emotional burdens. The action step will be a journaling exercise to increase awareness of your core beliefs about forgiveness. Forgiveness is a concept that is often misunderstood. Some people believe that in order to forgive someone, you have to be able to say, that's okay and somehow minimize or absolve the offender for their actions against you. But often, the offender's actions were not okay, and no amount of passage of time is going to make it be okay. This assumption often leads a person to think that forgiveness violates justice. Earlier, we talked about how our emotions serve a purpose. But that purpose can be misconstrued. We talked about the concept that fear-based emotions are intended to help keep us safe by heightening awareness and improving performance, but sometimes we misinterpret this and conclude that the emotions of worry, fear, or anxiety are actually what is keeping us safe. We are therefore reluctant to let go of those feelings as long as we believe that they are necessary for our safety. Similarly, we will be reluctant to forgive others if we feel that withholding forgiveness is necessary to uphold justice and fairness. So, let's delve a little deeper into the concept of forgiveness so that you may make a better informed decision on whether or not to withhold forgiveness. First of all, let's clarify what forgiveness is not. Experts who study or teach forgiveness make it clear that forgiveness is not excusing or condoning either a person or their actions. Forgiveness is not surrendering, and it does not imply weakness. Forgiveness is not resignation or passivity. Forgiveness does not indicate a balancing of the scales or that justice has been satisfied. Forgiving someone doesn't obligate you to reconcile with the person who harmed you or to release them from legal accountability. Psychologists generally define forgiveness as a conscious deliberate decision 
to release feelings of resentment or vengeance toward a person or group who has harmed you, regardless of whether or not they actually deserve your forgiveness. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you have to forget the incident, but it implies that you are able to detach the negative feelings associated with the event. Although forgiveness does benefit the person who is being forgiven, the primary benefactor is actually the person who is doing the forgiving. Forgiveness brings the forgiver peace of mind and frees him or her from corrosive anger and deeply held negative feelings. In that way, it empowers you to recognize the pain you suffered without letting that pain define you. It enables you to heal and move on with your life. Furthermore, forgiveness also benefits us physically. Research shows that the act of forgiveness can improve the quality of our sleep, reduce pain, lower the risk of heart attack, improve cholesterol levels, reduce blood pressure and levels of anxiety, depression, and stress. On the other hand, holding a grudge can harm you emotionally, mentally, and physically. A study from Emory University found that bitter people had higher blood pressure and were more likely to die from heart disease than more forgiving people. Research shows that holding a grudge increases stress by boosting cortisol levels and decreasing happiness by diminishing oxytocin. In addition, prolonged feelings of resentment can also negatively impact metabolism immune system, and organ function. It keeps your body locked into that fight-or-flight response, which leads to a variety of chronic diseases. One of my favorite examples demonstrating the personal benefits of forgiveness is in the story of the Corrie Ten Boom, which she shares in her book, The Hiding Place. Corrie was a middle-aged Dutch watchmaker happily living a content and quiet life with her father and sister Betsy, when their lives were forever altered by the horrors of the Holocaust during World War II. This devout Christian family joined the underground and helped many Jews escape the Nazis by hiding them in their home. Eventually, they were caught and arrested. She endured the privation and degradation of Ravensbrück concentration camp. Before the war ended, both her father and her sister died. When Corey was released from prison, she set up a rehabilitation center in the Netherlands to help others like herself who had been prisoners of war. She found it interesting that it was not the Germans or the Japanese that these people had the hardest time forgiving. It was their fellow Dutchmen who had sided with the enemy. But, in every case, forgiveness played an integral part of the healing process. She scheduled speaking engagements, and wherever she went, she spoke of the healing power of forgiveness. After one of these speeches in Germany, she was startled to have a man that she recognized as a former guard at Ravensbrück come up to her and thank her for her message. It was the first time since her release that she had stood face to face with one of her captors, and her blood seemed to freeze. Suddenly, forgiveness wasn't a general concept. It was personal and specific. The man thrust out his hand to shake hers, but she felt momentarily paralyzed. Although she hesitated and struggled with her emotions for a moment, she prayed for divine strength and allowed herself to raise her hand, woodenly and mechanically. Then, she says, an amazing thing took place. She describes a feeling like a current starting at her shoulder and racing down her arm into their joined hands and into her heart sprang a mercy 
and charity towards this former enemy that almost overwhelmed her. The story of Corey Ten Boom illustrates the truthfulness in the concept that although forgiveness can benefit the one being forgiven, the primary benefit goes to the one doing the forgiving. Forgiveness is about healing the soul of the person who was hurt. Today's action step is a journaling exercise to increase awareness of your core beliefs about forgiveness or to do a visualization exercise. Please spend 20 to 30 minutes writing about one or more of the following prompts. 1. If I forgive someone, that means... And then just write whatever comes to mind. Number two, I don't want to forgive others because, and write whatever comes to mind. Number three, I don't want to forgive myself because. Number four, forgiving others or myself might reduce my stress because. Number five, I used to think that forgiveness meant, and fill in the blank, But now I believe forgiveness means, and write whatever comes to mind. There's also an alternate activity. Sometimes a person is willing to forgive others, but is unwilling to forgive themselves. They feel like they deserve to suffer, and forgiving themselves would be unjust. The same principles apply to forgiving yourself as to forgiving other people. Remember that psychologists generally define forgiveness as a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance toward a person, whether or not they actually deserve your forgiveness. So an alternate activity suggestion to that of doing the journaling exercise is to visualize yourself in a scenario similar to the one described by Corey Ten Boom when she met her former guard. Only this time, it is you facing yourself in the mirror. You know your past, just like Corey knew the guard's past. Will you choose to lift your hand and touch the hand in the mirror. I hope you have enjoyed this excerpt from my book, You Got This, An Action Plan to Calm Fear, Anxiety, Worry, and Stress. I feel strongly about the need to help empower people to be resilient and able to handle their problems, so I will continue sharing excerpts from the book in other episodes of Linda's Corner. In closing, I would like to share a quote from Diane Donovan, senior reviewer at Midwest Book Review. She says, You got this, an action plan to calm fear, anxiety, worry, and stress provides self-help readers with a concrete course of action to reduce stress and anxiety. See you next time on Linda's Corner.